In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Hello and warm welcome to all of you dear viewers of Marjayat TV. Be with us with an episode of the program Marjayat Horizon. Stay tuned, watching news, reports and meetings. All regard your grand jurist, Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Husseini Shirazi. With a staying out of the political conflicts of the time which had embroiled the region and using the gap created for him, Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, established a vast scientific movement which nourished the world of Islam up to now. More than 4,000 productive students in the fields of theology, Quranic sciences, chemistry, astronomy, and many other branches, as well as a wide range of books, are just a small outcome of this vast scientific movement. Each year, on 25th of Shawwal, Shia Muslims mourn the loss of their sixth Imam across the world. The central office of the Grand Islamic Authority, Ayatollah Shirazi, also marked this day in a ceremony with the participation of many scholars and famous figures. This commemoration ceremony was held at the presence of the Grand Shia Islamic leader, Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi.
It is for many years that the Muslim world has been hit with a disastrous phenomenon which has brought the Muslim world nothing but the death of thousands and backwardness it struggles with. Extremism, as addressed by the Shia scholar Sayyid Mustafa Ghazwini, is a product of dictatorship and ignorance towards the true Islamic teachings. This Shia scholar delivered a lecture about this topic in Los Angeles to Western audiences. Let's watch a report about this brief lecture. Sayyid Mustafa Ghazvini is a Shia Muslim scholar who has focused his numerous activities in the field of preaching the true Islamic teachings and beliefs to the Western culture aiming to build up a correct and fair understanding of the Muslims and their values to the world. This sacred goal, which has been addressed several times by the Grand Islamic Authority and Juris Ayatollah Shubuzi, has led this Shia scholar to attend many different panels and discuss the authentic Islamic beliefs and values to the non-Muslims in the world. In a panel held, this ensued welcome for Islamic figures living in the United States of America to address one of the most significant issues that the world of Islam is facing in these years. Islam and extremism have been at the core of many questions which try to investigate the solid rock of radicalism and extremism in the Muslim predominantly countries, yet the critical point about such discussions is to approach this topic comparing the status quo of the Muslim countries and the peaceful call of Islam which was firstly established by Prophet Muhammad and then developed by his pure progeny. The Grand Islamic scholar Sayyid Mustafa Ghazvini was a guest speaker at this event held by Pacific Institute. The Shia scholar tried to illuminate on the roots of extremism and radicalism in the Islamic countries. Why we have extremism and radicalism emerging from the most peaceful religion in the world? What factors and elements contributed into the creation of what we see, the mayhem we see in the streets of Paris and Madrid and London and New York and Baghdad and Damascus and Yemen and other countries. I believe there are Islamic extremism, so-called Islamic extremism, is the product of Islamic dictatorship and totalitarianism that had been exercised for many centuries, many centuries, had been exercised since after the first generation of the caliphs, after the death of the Prophet Muhammad and the four caliphs who succeeded him, dictatorship emerged in Islam and continued until today, until today. As a result of this, dictatorship, when a Muslim ruler believes that he's intrinsically cultivated to rule, he is born to rule, and with iron fist, and not only to rule, but he's representing God on earth. Whatever he's saying and he's doing, this is the will of God, and people to have to accept that and live with that. He's representing God. He's ruling in the name of the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad and God. And then you see the absence of pluralism. Islam, a religion that believes in a pluralism. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Main principle in Quran. Whoever wants to believe, let him believe, do so. Whoever wants to reject God, let him do so. We don't coerce anyone to believe. This was the principle and the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is one reason. The absence of democracy from most of the Muslim societies. Today we have 55 countries with Muslim majorities. The vast majorities of those 55 countries are non-democratic, anti-democratic. The other reason for this, for the emergence of extremism, within Muslim societies is misguidance and ignorance. Do you know, my friends, that most of the Muslims, they learn about Islam only once a week for only 15 minutes or 20 minutes when they go to the Friday service. That's the only venue for them, for the vast majority of them. I'm not speaking about the educated. I'm speaking about the lay people. They go to the mosque to listen to the sermon, 
in most countries these sermons have been given to the imam or the preacher by the government to praise the government the sultan most of the scholars not all of them most of the scholars in most islamic countries they work not for god they work for the government for the sultan and you know if you look at the some of the narrations in our islamic books it says that you must submit you must submit to the ruler you have a duty to submit to him even if he hurts you even if he tortures you your duty is to listen to him and say yes sir to him so this these factors of these elements different elements of misguidance not understanding the true message of islam by the muslims themselves muslims they lack critical studies of their own religion they lack that because they don't have the freedom they don't have the facility if someone wants to speak his mind he's under arrest this is why we have these waves of immigrants leaving muslim countries heading to to north america to europe many of them are drowning in the mediterranean not because of the economic factor that my previous speakers they referred to not only the, the lack of economy but also the lack of dignity and human rights in many muslim countries this is why we have extremism and unless until we eradicate dictatorship we would not be able to put an end to extremism in the muslim world this is a disease this is a a cancer that is spreading day by day what happened in france it could happen in america in orange county it could happen in our backyard here because we still we did not address the core issue the americans the europeans they want to fight islamic extremism and terrorism but they have good relationship with some dictators in the middle east they consider them to be their allies it does not work like that we have to pay the price i hope we enjoy from the discussion and from jihad and i hope i did not use my entire 10 minutes thank you so much on the days of sorrow and grief of the martyrdom of the shia muslims sixth leader imam al-sadiq peace be upon him the religious community of Rasul Azam from the holy city of Qadimiyah in Iraq made a pilgrimage trip to Iran and the holy city of Qom. In this trip, the members of the religious community attended at the central office of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi and gave ear to a lecture by the great scholar and the son of Ayatollah Shirazi, Sayyid Hussein Shirazi. Let's watch this report. Pilgrimage and the visitation of the holy personalities who resemble the name of God and his way to the people is repeatedly advised and encouraged by the holy prophet and his pure descendants. The Almighty God also says in his book, in houses which Allah has permitted to be exalted and that his name may be remembered in them. As the verse indicates, the Almighty God grants a higher position to specific places where the believers are encouraged to call unto him and pray their Lord. Nevertheless, the honor of these houses which are glorified by God and the personalities buried in them is only because of their connection to the God Almighty. Said Hussein Shirazi addressed this issue among a group of Shia Muslims from the community of Rasul Adam in the holy city of Qadimiya in Iraq. This great scholar praised the great work of these pilgrims who humbly accepted to bear the hardship of this travel and made their pilgrimage trip to the two hubs of Shia Muslims and to the mausoleums of Imam Rida and his sister, Lady Masuma, peace be upon her. The son of the Ayatollah Shirazi continued that the Holy Prophet's progeny have highly venetrated rank which is given to them by the God. And this is why numerous narrations speak of the great and uncountable rewards of paying visits to these great figures. These uncountable rewards have even outshined many other acts of worship, because the Ahlul Bayt have been the symbol of true faith and devotion to God Almighty. 
In completing his word, Sayyid Hussein Shirazi also pointed out this fact, that the pilgrimage which results in such a great reward is not confined to meeting the shrines of these holy figures, but it should also leave its great effects on the believers too. All the hadith which outweigh the rewards of visiting the Prophet's progeny and their shrines to all other acts of worship do not stop there. And they add this point, that the believer should also acquire a good comprehension of their visitation to these people. The believers are required to obtain the true belief system of Islam and develop a good understanding of God's great bounties to all his servants. But the person knows, knows where to go. Knows this. What is the place? مقام هذا الموقف وين جاي هذا الله الله شنو يعتبر هذا الموقف شنو عظمة هذا الإمام شنو ح... شنو حق الإمام هذه يسموه معرفة هذولا هؤلاء صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين هؤلاء قطب دائرة الإمكان هذولا أهل البيت عليهم الصلاة والسلام الله تبارك وتعالى بلا حدود يعطي ثواب في زيارتهم وفي أعمالهم في الوقوف بين يديهم وفي بيوتهم في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه In conclusion, said Hussein Shirazi reminded the pilgrims of the God's vast mercy and his endless power. He told the pilgrims that the visitation of the holy Ahlul Bayt is a unique time since the Ahlul Bayt are giving the gift of intercession for the believers. And therefore, everyone should use this good opportunity to ask their Lord to bless them with good in this life and the afterlife. The Shia scholars of North America reunited together at the martyrdom anniversary of Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, and held the 15th round of the annual Council of Shia scholars. In this council, these scholars exchanged their plans and opinions on the cultural programs in the future. Sheikh Taghi Zakiri, the head of Imam Shirazi World Foundation and Sheikh Sibawai, the representative of Ayatollah Shirazi and the co-founder of this council, explained about the activities and the prospects of this council. Let's watch this report. The 15th round of the annual conferences of Shia scholars in North America was held to manifest unity and determination for wide and constant change, coordination, collaboration and familiarization of the latest situations of the Muslims and the potentials existing for preaching the true teachings of Islam among the non-Muslims. This big conference enjoys the participation of many experienced and concerned Shia Muslim scholars who are leading several activities in the fields of culture, human rights, Islamic preaching and charity. Sheikh Zakari, the head of Imam Shirazi World Foundation and a member of this conference, speaks of the Council of Scholars, its characteristics, and the role of ISWF in its foundation. In addition, Sheikh Sibuye, a board member of this conference and the representative of the Grand Islamic Authority and Juris Ayatollah Sayyid Sara Hussein Shirazi, explains of the functions and the prospects ahead of this yearly conference. In the name of Allah, the Compassionate, the Merciful, this is the 15th conference of the League of Shia Scholars in North America, and it is a consultative conference for the Shias who reside in America, held on the martyrdom anniversary of Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him. We listened to numerous ideas that were presented by different groups of attendees, most of whom were directors of educational institutes and lecturers. Then we discussed the points that can help us as clerics and the religious leaders to solve the issue that which Shias face in this portion of time. It is worth mentioning that we are beginning to harvest the fruits of the ideas that Imam Shirazi Global Foundation has offered us a couple of years ago. <laughs> In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Firstly, I offer my greetings to all the viewers of Marjaya TV. Today, we are at the gathering which hosts Shia Islamic scholars in North America. This council is 15 years old, and this year we have held the 15th round of this annual council. I also participated in this council as a member of the council from the Canadian Montreal. The goals of this council were explained by my dear brother and Islamic scholar, Sheikh Dakiri. I believe that we still have some few problems, and I hope that they will be taken care of by the board so that we can enjoy the presence of more scholars here in this council. I hope that they will be taken care of by the board so that we can enjoy the presence of more scholars here in this council. 
We also brought the message and good wishes of our Grand Islamic Authority and jurist Ayatollah Sad Sadiq Shirazi to the Council and the scholars participating in this gathering and retreated the Ayatollah's emphasis for unity among Muslim scholars. We also presented the Council with a gift by the Ayatollah Shirazi. I pray the Lord to help us uphold the sacred call of the Ahlul Bayt and expand their peaceful message across the world. The Grand Jurist and Islamic Authority Ayatollah Shirazi counted each Shia Muslim believer as an ambassador of the great culture of the Holy Prophet's pure progeny and the true Islam. While speaking to Sheikh Fawzi, the Grand Ayatollah continued that the great potential which exists in Shia believers can be triggered through extensive studies, dedication, and faith in God Almighty. Let's watch a brief account of this meeting. The true followers of the Holy Prophet and his pure progeny and the Shia scholars have always been examples which represented the true Islamic conducts and thoughts. Through their adherence to the pure culture of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, these great figures could portray a coherent and well-balanced picture of Islam in all dimensions of living. This week, the Grand Jurist and Islamic Authority Ayatollah Shwazi welcomed one of his representatives at his central office in the holy city of Qom. Firstly, the Grand Jurist appreciated the non-stop efforts by this religious scholar and encouraged him to continue his works in the way of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Then Ayatollah Shirazi recounted the story of one of the great scholars who had dedicated his life in the way of introducing the culture of Ahlul Bayt and the true Islam to the whole world. The great scholar was a prominent Shia scholar who lived in Iraq and was considered as the leading marja of his time. This great Shia scholar spent his entire life in leading the Muslim community and introducing the truth about Islam and the Ahlul Bayt. In one of his trips across the country, he happened to pass by the town of Kifl, which had a seizable Jewish community in it. These Jews had founded a school in the city where they studied their religious texts and other briefs. The meeting held between this Shia scholar and the high priest led to a debate which astonished the Jewish scholars when they saw the supremacy and authority of him over the Jewish scriptures. This great scholar brought forth many examples of the Jewish scriptures and proved the Holy Prophet of Islam is God's last messenger. Then, the Grand Ayatollah Shubhazi stated that each Shia individual can be a representative of Ahlul Bayt anywhere in the world, but they need to expand their studies and dedication so that they can be successful in this way. In the case of that scholar, the Grand Ayatollah Shubhazi hinted that this great scholar had mastered all the scriptures in his youth time and through his dedication and faith he could guide those Jewish scholars to the right path. Addressing Sheikh Fouzi, Ayatollah Shirazi emphasized that not all the non-Muslims are inimical to the truth, but they are only kept ignorant. And once they learn about the Holy Ahlul Bayt, they would embrace the true Islam. Ayatollah Shirazi also referred to this fa that of today's world is in thirst for the culture of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. And moreover, this potential exists in this noble culture to help the world become a better place to live, as it encompasses all criteria for a successful life. However, it remains the job of Shia Muslim scholars and all the believers to involve themselves in introducing the Ahlul Bayt to the entire world. <laughs> This week, the central office of the Grand Islamic Authority and Jurist, Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, hosted some Shias and followers of His Eminence from Saudi Arabia. After meeting with the Grand Jurist and listening to the guidelines by His Eminence, these Shias gave ear to a lecture by the prominent scholar Sayyid Jafar Shirazi, the respected son of the late Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Shirazi. For more details about this meeting and a lecture, I invite you to watch this report. This week, the central office of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi hosted Shias and followers of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi from the city of Qatif in Saudi Arabia. After meeting with the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi and speaking to his eminence, this group of Shias enjoyed the company and the lecture by the Grand Scholar and the son of the late Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Shirazi. 
In his lecture, Sayyid Jafar Shirazi pointed out to the fact that the religion of Islam calls for learning science, and the fact that in the Arabic language the word Quran is derived from the word read. Moreover, there are numerous verses in the Holy Quran that support this claim, some of which are as follows. Read in the name of your Lord who created. He created man from a clot. Read and your Lord is most honorable, who taught to write with pen. Taught the human what he did not know. Prophet Muhammad also implemented this concept as he decided to let go of the captive polytheists who were defeated after waging a war against Prophet Muhammad and his followers, provided that each one of them teaches ten children the recitation of the Holy Quran. Therefore, learning the main principles of Islam must be through comprehensive studies, not following the others. أول آية أو أول آيات نزلت على الرسول صلى الله عليه وآله هذه تتضمن عنوان هذا الدين الله سبحانه وتعالى أقسم بالقلم نون والقلم وما يسطرون الله سبحانه وتعالى يقسم بالقلم والرسول صلى الله عليه وآله في حياته أيضا أولى هذا الأمر أهمية كبيرة Sayyid Jafar also continued that the Islamic law and the teachings of the Holy Quran are easy to fathom. As the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, I was sent to present a comprehensible and a merciful religion. After that he addressed the issue that the average reading time in some western countries hits the one hour mark every year while it does not exceed three minutes in the Arabic countries for every person. In the end, he laid out that increasing public awareness could touch the lives of many people around the world and even change their course of life. Furthermore, it is a religious duty to teach and encourage our children the habit of reading and seeking both religious and mundane science, for it is the only way to preserve their beliefs and build and increase public awareness in the society. <laughs> In a meeting with some young Shia religious activists from Kuwait, the respected son of the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi hinted that the Holy Ahl Bayt are the best pathway leading to Almighty God, and any believer should take this opportunity to make a visitation to them. Sayyid Hussein Shirazi also encouraged the youth to develop the rich understanding of the high position of the Ahl Bayt, peace be upon him, and be aware of their great contributions to the Islamic world. The inward tendency and attraction towards someone along with respect and honor is technically called the aura, which equals pilgrimage in English. Since the reality of a human is a soul, which is never annihilated, a pilgrim who makes pilgrimage of a demised dignitary has in fact made wizard of a living person, respected and honored him and sought his help. Therefore, pilgrimage is a connection between living individuals. Moreover, this Islamic practice has many individual and social benefits and effects, including establishing relationship with a perfect man as the holy infallibles, demonstrating faith and communicating with God, respecting and honoring Yahul Bay, the Prophet's progeny, reduction of crimes and the formation of unity against enemies. The respected scholar and son of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi, Sayyid Hussain Shirazi, also called the pilgrimage of the Holy Ahl Bayt, peace be upon them, as having great impressions on the believers. While speaking to some Shia young queries, this well known scholar hinted to the verse 36 of chapter 24, which reads In houses which Allah has permitted to be exalted, and that his name may be remembered in them. Furthermore, Sayyid Hussain Shirazi continued that the Almighty God has granted a special and unique position to the Holy Prophet of Islam and his pure progeny, and made their names and remembrance a road towards himself. He also said that the God Almighty has granted his servants these gates, which lead the people to himself, and this is why that each year, millions of Muslims rush to the sacred shrines of these holy figures, and pray the grandeur of their Lord, and renew their allegiance to the Almighty God. Then Sayyid Hussain Shirazi also emphasized on this fact that the Ahl Bayt are munificent and generous in the true sense of the word as they represent the Almighty God who is the most generous. So all the believers should keep in mind that they can shower themselves with this endless ocean of bounties and mercy so long as they have full comprehension of this great opportunity because in the absence of a good understanding of the Ahl Bayt and their high position before the God, we might not be able to appreciate the great opportunity of visiting these great figures. Then this great scholar referred to a famous Persian poem, 
which is translated in English as follows. To an atom with the gleams of early befalls, it shall ascend to the skies and shines. Sayyid Hussain Shirazi ended his words, wishing the young Shias from Kuwait to enjoy their trip on pilgrimage and asked them to be aware of the great position granted by the Almighty God to the Holy Imam Rida and his sister Lady Masuma, peace be upon them. Then Sayyid Hussain prayed for their success in all their lives and thanked them. <laughs> In his meeting with Mr. Nasrawi, who is the head of several educational centers in London, the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi referred to the non-stop efforts and the hardships that Abu Zar, a faithful companion of the great Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, went through for reviving the true Islamic teachings. For more details of this meeting, I invite you to watch a report of this program. Through the sacrifices of many great characters, the true call of Islam and the culture of Ahlul Bayt have survived the long centuries, and the tyrannical hands which saw their dominance endangered by its illuminating teachings. These sacrifices came with heavy prices as brave personalities such as Abu Dhar, who was a close companion of Prophet Muhammad, preferred death over remaining silent in the face of injustice. In his meeting with Mr. Faris Nasrawi, the director of several schools in the UK, the Grand Jurist and Islamic Authority Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi highlighted the unique character and the truthful personality of Abu Dhar, who never closed his eyes on Islam being derailed from its right track. Ayatollah Shirazi stated that Abu Dhar, this great companion of Prophet Muhammad and Imam Ali peace be upon them, was neither intimidated by the oppressors nor did he ever fall into the waves of ignorance. Instead, he always kept his voice in support of the right and never stayed aloof at the unjust distribution of welfare in the Muslim society. His frank outburst of tooth and brave objections to violation of Islamic reformations made him unbearable for the kings, so he was put on exile for several times to different places. The grand jury said about him that in one of these exiles, in the area called Jabal Amal, and despite that Abu Dhar didn't speak the language of the locals, he could have spread the culture of Ahlul Bayt and the fragrance of true Islam with his invited conducts. It is now more than 1400 years that the region of Jabal Amal has been the hub for the Shia Muslims and followers of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, and this place has given rise to many prominent scholars serving the cause of true Islam. Furthermore, the Grand Jurors told his guests that they also can work with a strong faith and dedication in the path of Ahlul Bayt just like Abu Dhar did. The Grand Ayatollah Shirazi also continued that they should withstand all the problems and difficulties in the way and never lose hope. Then the Ayatollah highlighted the importance of the preaching the pure Islamic teachings and beliefs in the Western countries, especially the United Kingdom. In the end, Ayatollah Shirazi thanked all the efforts by Mr. Nasrawi and all his colleagues as well as the groups of Shia Muslims who are active in the field of preaching pure Islamic thoughts and teachings in the Western countries and prayed for their success. Among a group of Shias from Saudi Arabia, the respected scholar and the son of the late Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Shirazi highlighted the significance of praying to God Almighty. During his speech, Sayyid Muhammad Ali Shirazi reminded the believers that Almighty God is near to all the peoples and if we feel far from God, it is the sins we commit which make us feel so. Let's have a deeper look at this lecture. Praying to God is the sense that the believers call and ask the Almighty for his blessings is highly recommended in both the Holy Quran and the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad and his poor household. The Holy Quran recommends the believers to call on their Lord and then indicates God is near to all his servants and will answer the prayers, provided that the people believe in him and they may tread on the right path. Said Muhammad Ali Shirazi touched upon this issue when he was speaking to a group of Shias and pilgrims from Saudi Arabia. Said Muhammad Ali Shirazi started his lecture with a recitation of the verse 186, chapter 2 of the Holy Quran, and reiterated the importance of praying in the Islamic thought. This great Islamic scholar counted three elements of seeking nearness to God. 
developing a plan to change our lives and obtaining humbleness before the creator of this universe as the philosophies behind praying to God Almighty. By nature, the course of creation moves towards perfection and excellence in a journey that is destined towards God Almighty. However, the Quran has made it clear that God is the closest to all men and women. Said Muhammad Ali Shubazi summed up these two Quranic variations in Sa'da. The meaning of distance in spirituality is not the same with the common sense. In our modern world, if point A is two meters away from point B, then point B keeps the same distance with point A respectively. However, these rules are not employed in spirituality, so it is possible that God is close to us and we due to our sins and crimes, are far from his vast mercy. Thus, Quran recommends praying for seeking nearness to God Almighty. فالمهم أن يكون الإنسان محسنا حتى يقترب إلى الله عز وجل إن رحمة الله قريب من المحسنين إذا من فلسفة الدعاء القرب إلى الله عز وجل الإمام الصادق سلام الله عليه يقول أنه ما من شيء يقربكم إلى الله كالدعاء Said Muhammad Ali Shuwazi also hinted that the believers should focus their attentions on the contents of the prayers and try to get inspirations and change their lives for the better. These prayers should not be recited for the sake of divine rewards because they can tell us a lot about the defects of our lives and show us how we can rectify them. Said Muhammad Ali Shuwazi also added human beings according to Quran are rebellious creatures who are inclined to disobey their Lord as soon as they think of themselves independent. Thus, the Quran instructs the believers to keep their connections with God and pray to Him, since this act will remind them of their constant need for the blessings of the Lord, who has been their only guardian. يطغى أن الإنسان اللي يطغى يظلم يضرب شلون واحد يروض نفسه أمير المؤمنين يقول سلام الله عليه ولكن ما هي نفسي أروضها بالتقوى شلون واحد يجعل مكابح داخلية حتى لا يطغى لا يخرج عن طوره الدعاء مؤثر كيف لأن الدعاء برنامج عقائدي روحي نفسي أخلاقي متكامل And now we're going to watch the most important news all around the world regarding Ayatollah Sayyid Saleh Hussein Shirazi in the next part of our program News in Brief Statement by Ayatollah Shirazi office on Imam Sadiq martyrdom anniversary on the martyrdom anniversary of Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, the office of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi in the holy city of Qom has released a statement and emphasized on the significance of venerating the way marks of Prophet Muhammad and his household, peace be upon them. A part of the statement reads, It is a religious duty for everyone to honor this day and to participate in commemoration ceremonies all over the world and to publicize the culture of Prophet Muhammad and his household so that peace would dominate the world once again. It is noteworthy that in the statement, the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi calls for Muslims' unity and prays to God Almighty to hasten the reappearance of the Savior of the world. Ayatollah Shirazi office releases a statement regarding Iraqi's life conditions. The office of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi in the holy city of Karbala has released a statement in August and thanked the believers who have taken a part in providing facilities and first aids for the oppressed people of Iraq and demanded the Iraqi officials to take the necessary measures in providing security and improving the life conditions of all Iraqis who have been living in the worst life conditions and have made so many sacrifices to preserve the religion of Islam from defamation by Daesh terrorists. A part of the statement reads as follows. Henceforth, we thank every single person who works sincerely to improve the life conditions of Iraqi citizens. We also demand the Iraqi officials to step up and clear the face of Iraq from the affliction it struggles with through prompt responses to people's needs and wiping out the organizational corruption in different sections. We ask all the Iraqis to stand united against the Takfiris terrorists in different parts of Iraq. 
conference under the title of Prosperity in Holy Karbala, Jawad al Institute, which is an institution dependent to the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi, located in the holy city of Karbala, has held a conference under the title of Prosperity. The conference was held at the presence of a group of religious, cultural, and social figures. It is worth mentioning that Mr. Gais al Asadi, the director of Jawad al Institute, delivered the lecture on the elements that secure the prosperity of a nation. Ayatollah Shirazi representative met with the priests of Christian community in Montreal, Canada. Sheikh Saleh Sibaway, the representative of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi in Canada and the director of Ayatollah Shirazi Cultural Institute met with the priest of a Christian community in Montreal, Canada. During this meeting, both sides discussed common beliefs and emphasized on the improvement of interfaith dialogues between Christians and Muslims. In the end, they also highlighted the significance of increasing public awareness about extremism and terrorism. Ayatollah Shirazi office in Holy Karbala hosts soldiers, a number of Abul Fadl volunteer forces members in Iraq, and a caravan from Saudi Arabia attended at the office of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi in the holy city of Karbala and met with its directors. The guests listened to a lecture delivered by Sayyid Mahdi Shirazi and Sheikh Talib al Salihi. <laughs> Following the daily meetings of the Grand Jury Sayatullah Shirazi in recent days, a number of scholars, religious, cultural and social figures along with different groups of youngsters and the public from all around the world gathered at Ayatollah Shirazi's central office and gave ear to the words, guidelines and advices from the Grand Jurist. We have come from Iraq, from the Nasiriyah province. Our religious community is called the followers of Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him. Our religious community comes every year to visit the holy shrines of Imam Rida and Lady Masma, peace be upon them all. Our pilgrimage consists of walking on foot. The words that we heard from the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi were very inspiring. We not only come to visit the holy shrines of Prophet's family, but we do also visit the scholars who represent them. As the narration states, the scholars are Prophet's representatives. So based on this saying, visiting the scholars is the same as visiting the Prophets. We have heard inspiring and enlightening words from the great scholar and jurist Ayatollah Si Sadiq Shirazi. And these words encourage us to continue our work and effort.
يقول سماحة السيد أمشاق أباس أجواني فرام مسكاتو مون The Grand Juris has read this verse Call to the path of your Lord with wisdom and find admonition And also another verse states Repulse the evil deed with one which is better There are many ways to call the people to the path of Lord One of which is through words And secondly through actions and practices And the Grand Juris highlighted that actions speak louder than words Thank you so much for staying with us. For more information on our daily news about Marjayat, you can visit marjayattv.com and its official web pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until the next episode, may Allah preserve you. Bye for now.